something, sweethearts? Are you afraid of the dark? I used to be very afraid of it too, once. So afraid, in fact, that I kept a flashlight with me all night. Until one day, someone told me a fairy tale about a tiny little bug that was also very afraid of the dark, just like you. Once upon a time, in the dark, dark woods, there lived a tiny little bug, a very common bug. And the woods that he lived in were no different from other wooded places you might see. But every evening, when day turned to night, and the woods grew very, very dark, the tiny, timid little bug started to become afraid. One night, while sitting under a leaf, shivering with fear, the bug saw all kinds of horrible monsters. There was one with long fangs and mouth open wide like a suitcase. And there was another with sharp claws reaching out for him. As the night dragged on, the woods grew scarier and scarier. As the dark closed in, he became more and more afraid. Finally, the frightened little bug could no longer stand it, and he cried out. Oh, I'm scared, scared. Mother, please, mother, help me. Please, turn on the light. All the animals in the woods were terrified by the shouting. Half asleep and having no idea what was going on, they scattered in every direction. The bug saw the animals' shadows scurrying around in the woods. He became frightened and cried out even louder, Help! I'm dying! All this noise the bug was making was causing a poor little wood pixie to suffer. She had to fly to the school in the morning to learn all kinds of magic. But because she was so sleepy, she would fall asleep during the lesson instead of listening carefully to her teacher. Everybody knows that when you fall asleep during class, you can get bad grades. The pixie made up her mind to put an end to these nighttime concerts. She flew over to see the bug in the dark, and she said, Good evening, dear bug. Why are you always shouting so loudly? Look around. All the animals ran away. Who did they run away from? Asked the frightened bug. From you. You're such a monster. I'm not a monster, said the bug, crying. I'm a small. I'm afraid. Hmm. Then why am I not afraid? Asked the pixie. I'm also small. Yes, but... And the bug started to whimper. But look, you have a bright lantern. And that's why nothing scares you. The wood pixie sighed. Yes, that's tough. I'll have to conjure the small lantern for you. Waves, cushion, hedgehog. One, brush, fish, sponge. Two, cheese, tomatoes, sugar cubes. Three, hocus pocus, lantern, turn on. And bam, instead of having a lantern like the wood pixie, the bug had a light of tail. This is what happens when you don't listen carefully in class, thought the pixie to herself. The bug giggled. He looked around and noticed that the monster with the long face and the mouth wide open like a suitcase had turned into a rotten stump. And in the light of his tail, the monster with the sharp claws looked like an ordinary juniper tree. And suddenly, the lighting bug realized something. There's actually nothing at all to be afraid of. Every night, he would switch on his tail light and fly around all night until the morning and then catch up on his sleep during the day. And the wood pixie, just before falling asleep, would smile as she gazed at a bright little star as it slowly flitted from branch to branch in the silence of the night. Okay, sweethearts, the time has come for me to say goodnight. Sometimes it seems like you might see something in the darkness, but there is no reason to feel afraid. Take my advice and be happy. It's easier to learn after a good night's rest. The light of knowledge is best.
Masha's spooky stories. It's very strange. The people have the weirdest fears. It's simply laughable. Once upon a time, a little boy was riding a trolley. Next to him, some old lady was talking out loud. She was saying that if someone would go into the sea beyond the buoy, or would go swimming where they're not supposed to, then blop, blop, and forget all about that person. So after that fateful day, the poor boy was avoiding water like if it was fire. Camp Little Carp. The boy was spending summer at the camp. The only thing was that when the kids were swimming, the boy was sitting by the water, staring deep into it. He was staring attentively. He started to imagine that someone in the water was looking at him. And the boy began to worry that as soon as he would go swimming, that someone in the water would grab him by his foot and drag him to the bottom of the lake. Scary. So anyway, this boy got so afraid of the water that he stopped washing his face in the morning. Then, just in case, he stopped washing his hands before eating his food. And in the end, the boy set a camp record. He didn't wash during half of his time in the camp. And I'm telling you that if the kids are not properly washed, they'll turn into something no one will recognize. So then, he was acting weird for a while. He started to notice everyone behaving strangely around him. First, the kids saw him and ran away crying. The teachers looked at him and also ran away. Only the brave coach didn't run away and hid behind some gym equipment. Ha, huh, so silly. He thought the boy wouldn't find him in there. Ha, 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 ha. Oh yeah, no way, no. How could you not notice such a big fat man trying to hide in there? Got you, got you. I found you in there, the boy wanted to say. But he heard himself saying, Oink, 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 oink. The coach screamed like a little girl. Oh dear me, please save me, it's a werewolf that looks like a pig. He was right. Because the boy didn't wash, he got turned into a scary, dirty pig, just like that. The thing was that the pig werewolf couldn't live in the camp next to the normal kids. And so, the boy pig was sent to live together with all other pets. Eventually, he realized that he needed to stop being afraid of the water if he didn't want to spend his time at the camp eating some weird leftovers like the watermelon rinds. He faced his fear. He closed his eyes, ran, and jumped right into the lake where the smallest kids were usually swimming. And nothing scary at all happened to him. The boy pig got very happy and ran over to the sink, put his head under the water, and suddenly, in the mirror, instead of the pig's snout, he saw an ordinary little boy's nose. Then, the boy took a bar of soap and started lathering up his very scary looking pig's hooves. And, oh how, they turned back into his normal hands. The boy started to swim every day, wash his face, brush his teeth, and take a hot shower. <laughs> when the camp was over, so was a transformation from the dirty pig back into the nice and clean little boy. And he broke the 100 meter butterfly record too. Camp Little Carp. When his mother arrived to the camp, pick up her little son, she kissed him right in the pig's snout. No, I mean his nose. You shouldn't be scared of water. And you need to remember, this important safety rule. You never swim far from the shore. <laughs> oh.
a clue for everything. You say like scary monsters, monstrous nightmares. Ah, we are so scared, scared. And nobody has ever seen them in real life. But one boy has met one. Let me tell you how it was. Once upon a time, there was a place left by everybody, a tractor's plant. The deal is that the boy has lost the scoop from his toy tractor, and he believed that he could find the spare one at this plant. And once after the nap time, when none of the adults could see him, he left for that place. The boy climbed over the fence, and he saw a dull building standing in front of him. Broken poles were sticking around everywhere, and all windows were broken. The lights were turned off, and just one tiny window at the broken tower had a mere light on. The boy has climbed at this tower. And there, in the room, at the table, in front of the mirror, was the ugliest monster sitting relaxed. He was all covered up with fur. He looked at himself and put on lipstick with a painting roller. There is only one word about it, horror. He made a hiccup because he got scared and it made such a loud sound in the silence that the monster shivered and dropped the roller into his jaws. The boy, due to fear, rolled down the stairs and fell, and he could not understand how he had appeared at some damp underground. He looked around. Oh, my holy mommy! They sat one in front of the other on some boxes, two monsters, and next to them, some unshaved mister dressed in coverall. There is a wooden reel for spooling the cable, and they are using it to pound very loud. And all of a sudden, the monster, the one covered with scales and with a pike head and snake tail, <laughs> has hit the reel and roared thick fish. And the second monster at the table with a trunk thrown behind the shoulder started to giggle so disgustingly that it made the boy's flesh crawl like cockroaches running all over his back. So the monsters have caught the mister and beat in his forehead. The boy, being beside himself with fear, got out of the underground and found himself in a workshop. It was quiet around and getting dark, but there was something far away, leaking drop by drop somewhere. And then, all of a sudden, in the center of the workshop, a throne is standing, covered with skulls and crossbones. A king is sitting on it. He was in a shell himself, holding a laser sword in his clutches. He noticed the boy and his anger made his green, ugly face convulse. All of a sudden, the lights turned on. And somebody's thin, tiny voice screamed, Stop, stop, stop! Why has some strange kid appeared in front of our camera? Marivana, I'm asking you! There's no way I can shoot in such conditions! Take a break! Somewhere from the top of the camera platform, when the camera got down, the king on the throne has thrown his laser sword into the corner. A break again? 150 takes so far! It turns out that a real movie was being made. The boy had gotten a clue right after the unshaved mister brought him outside the fence. And all of the monsters were actors! They were not real, and were only pretending everything. Why should I, a silly head, be afraid of them? So, my dear, all monsters from the books and movies, all of them are not real, just a fiction. A figment of a fancy mind. And if you want to see a real monster, then look at a fly under the magnifying glass.
Masha's Spooky Stories. My darlings, have you ever been afraid of getting lost somewhere? I've not always been afraid of getting lost, but once I got lost, and then I heard the stir of the cutest kitten. And so, once upon a time, an ordinary kitten lived in a house. He was not one of a kind or something special. But the only thing was, whenever he needed to leave his house, he got lost in a moment. He would jump out into the street to scratch his fur on the ground or have a little run. And then he wouldn't have a clue as to where he was. He would crawl under a bench or into a corner and stay sitting there scared to death. Everything was unfamiliar, and he had no idea where his house was. And he wished he was by his owner's side, back in his home again. It was getting dark. Many buildings were surrounding him, and arrogant dogs were being walked. Asking them something was so frightening. So, no matter if it was a cat or a dog passing by, they didn't notice the kitten. They were completely lost in their own thoughts and wishes and time was passing by. It was late at night and the kitten was hungry, but there was nothing to eat. Needs must be met, and the kitten had to risk his life. There was not a crumb of bread inside, and his heart ached with discovery. It was about time to say goodbye to life, when all of a sudden, a bird came from somewhere in the sky. Oh, 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 what is this, a kite? The kitten said frightened, and then he curled up like a hedgehog ball. Well, I'm caught and dead, he thought. And the bird landed and said, Hello, I'm a very diligent postman pigeon. Why are you crying? Would you like a sandwich? Can't you find your way back home? Don't you have a compass with you? I'm almost dead. I'm really hungry, the kitten shook his head. Then. He put some bites into his mouth, and he got a taste for life again. The pigeon is not so frightening anymore, and he asked, Do you remember your home address? The kitten tried to recall, but the numbers were all wrong. It would have been better to have them written on my tail. When you have an address, it is easier to search. I am a homing pigeon. Birds like me are never lost and always come home wherever they are. It's all very well, but I'm not a homing kitten. I don't usually need to make an effort to get home. If you ever get lost anywhere, don't let yourself get even more lost and don't be shy with others. Approach somebody who is older than you and describe to someone what you are trying to find. Ah, the kitten perked up. It's so simple. My owner has sunlight dots on her face and a turned up nose. She loves candies and her pockets are always filled with candy wrappers. Her hair is straight, red, with balls on her head. She responds to the name of Masha. At this moment, the pigeon disappeared at once and the kitten got scared again. And he was lonely again, thinking, oh, I'll die abandoned, but suddenly, what is that? She screamed, my kitten! Someone grabs him and squeezes him and pushes his nose inside a bowl with milk. Here is some milk, drink it all. The kitten is so happy, I'm delighted. His owner is cradling him in her arms like a baby. And meanwhile, she said, all tussled up. The tail is covered with burdock. You have your address written. Not on your tail, but on your collar. Thanks to the pigeon. He came over and told me where you were. And here's the candy to show you how grateful I am. I made my way here as fast as I could. Masha looks at the kitten, who is already sleeping peacefully. Here we are again, fellows, my dear fellows. If you get lost, the most important thing is not to panic. Remember your home address telephone number and don't hesitate to ask adults for assistance and help conquer your fears if you get lost 
pull yourself together and get found. Masha's Spooky Stories. Do you know which is the scariest holiday of all? No, it's not Halloween. Many kids are so afraid of Christmas Eve. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, on Christmas Eve, some parents left their daughter, Sonia, alone at home. And they went to the theater to watch the Nutcracker Ballet. The house was warm and the TV was on, shooting some cartoons. The girl was eating candy from the Christmas tree when she thought, oh, the Christmas Eve party is starting soon. The guests will be coming with presents. Oh, I have to sing and recite poems in front of everybody. That is really terrifying. That's more terrifying than writing on the board in the front of class. Suddenly, Something made a noise, and the TV set said, Little girl, little girl, the guests are on their way. They're on a nearby street. Sonia was so surprised that she almost choked on the candy. And the TV set kept on talking. Little girl, little girl, the guests are walking up the stairs. Out of a sudden, Sonia hears some noises at the stairs outside. Steps, laughing, joyful voices. And the TV set continues talking. Little girl, little girl, the guests are already in the living room. And click, the TV turned off. Oh, suddenly three people ran inside the house. The man in a bunny mask put Sonia on a chair and they all started to dance around her. They were laughing, jumping, screaming, and right in her ears. What a beautiful girl! Please recite us a poem. Sing a song. Be a good little girl. Sonia couldn't remember any of the poems she had recited before. Her stomach was growling, her forehead sweating, and her knees shivering. She was thinking that it could be even more frightening to perform in front of Santa Claus when the guests started yelling. Let's call Santa! Let's call Santa! Let's call Santa! Sonia turned back and Santa was right there. Right after, her chair started to shake and seemed to be stretching. Sonia looked down and the floor was getting further and further away. Rapidly, she couldn't see the floor and the ceiling was getting closer. Sonia squeezed the kitchen chair as hard as she could with her hands and feet and closed her eyes. She remained quiet, silently thinking, Oh, I wish the end would come quickly. And somewhere down there, Santa started yelling, Christmas will never start without poems. Ho, ho, ho. At that very moment, Sonia felt somebody touch her on the shoulder. It was the man wearing Alexander Pushkin's mask hanging from the lamp. He said, Give me a minute, and I'll ask you for a duel with my lyrics when it matters to run freely. Sonia was prepared to shout as loud as she could, but she opened her mouth and unexpectedly whispered, I'm afraid to recite a poem. I'm afraid I'll get it wrong. If I don't know what I'm doing, the holiday might be ruined. Oh, I wish that stage fright could be cured in a blink of an eye. Then I realized that Santa was waiting for me to recite. I'll get off the chair, get out of the way. There's nothing left to say. And the guests shouted, Bravo! They clapped and started to shake the chair strongly. Sonia could not stop from closing her eyes and fell off of the chair. And all of a sudden, she woke up. She opened her eyes and saw her parents smiling and trying to wake her up. Get up, sweetheart. You're going to miss Santa in the presents if you stay asleep. Sonia nervously peeked, and Santa really had come. He put his bag on the floor, stepped on the chair, made a bow, and bang! He started to recite a poem. Just remember, before it is spoken, 
There's nothing to fear when reciting a poem. A few words may be totally forgotten, but the holidays will be incredibly bright. Immediately, Sonia remembered about Pushkin. She pulled Santa off the chair and performed herself. Understand it? It's quite all right. You don't need to ask for permission. Just climb a chair and recite. You say the words loud and clear, and it will be a charming delight. Then we're going to recite a poem, and we're going to dance and sing a song.